Hi everyone, welcome to the One Code Camp channel. So in this video, we're diving into Mongoose, which is a powerful library that transforms how you work with MongoDB in Node.js. So we're going to discover its advantages. We will also guide you on installing Mongoose and connecting it to MongoDB. And we will also walk you through some basic uh, Mongoose crude operations. So let's go ahead and start learning Mongoose together. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to One Code Camp. My name is Ian and I'm going to have a comprehensive discussion of what Mongoose is about, why should you use it on your next Mern project, and how. Let's start. We're here now at mongoosejs.com and at their landing page, we'll see that they define Mongoose as an object data modeling library for node.js. What that means is that Mongoose is a tool that helps us simplify the interaction with MongoDB databases and enabling developers to work with MongoDB in a more user-friendly manner. We can think of it this way. Imagine you're building a house. You need a way to design and organize the structure of your house, right? Mongoose acts like an architect that's responsible for creating the blueprint for each room in your house. In addition to this blueprint, Mongoose also serves as the communicator between you and the construction personnel and also the engineers. It helps you give precise instructions on how you want things to be done and ensures that your vision for the house is properly conveyed and executed. Now that we know Mongoose a tiny bit more, I'll show you how to install it on your Node.js projects. Provided that you already have Node and MongoDB installed, we're going to proceed in opening Visual Studio Code as our IDE. Let me put mine up here, maximize it, and then let's call create a folder. Open folder. And then let's create a folder on our desktop. Let's name it Mongoose. And then select folder. All right. Now inside our Mongoose folder, let's open a terminal. I want you to make sure that our terminal is pointing on the exact location where we created the Mongoose folder. It should look like this. All right, now once we're here, um, to initialize a Node.js project, let's type in the command npm init dash y. And wait for that to load up. Okay, now once we have this file inside our folder, we are now ready to install Mongoose. The way we're doing it is we're typing in npm i and then Mongoose. Now, if you don't have Node and MongoDB yet, we have another tutorial for MongoDB which I'll be including a link on our description box. Just need to wait for this to finish loading. Let's create a file while we're waiting. Let's put here app.js. Alright, now our Mongoose has finished installing as well. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to um, connect our app that JS file to our MongoDB server. The way we can do it is we're gonna type in here a variable. Let's name it Mongoose. And then we're going to say that we needed this to be required. And we're gonna put in Mongoose. Right, and then down here, we're going to use connect. And then here, inside our parentheses, should be the link to the MongoDB server installed on our PC locally. Now, you might encounter an error um, connecting this code or this file to our MongoDB. If that happens, what you can do is, um, if you have the MongoDB compass installed on your PC, you can create a new connection for your MongoDB compass or your, for your MongoDB server to avoid any further errors. Let me go ahead and open up my MongoDB compass in here. It's still trying to open my end. Okay, let me put that up here. Now let's wait for this to load up. Okay. Now, the default URI connection of our MongoDB compass will look like this. The local host that specified um, 27017 as its port. 
that we would like to remove it and then change it to we copy and paste that up here change that to this address instead and push on connect all right and there we have it it's now connected once that's connected we can now put the same uri in here and then we are going to use a database test you notice it's not there on our mongodb compass it will automatically um, generate this test database for us it's not here yet but the way we're doing it is we're asking um, this database to be included or to be automatically generated since we are putting it up here on our app.js file so we're also going to write use real url parser setting this to true and then we're also going to use use unified topology we're also setting to true we got a comma in here okay and then what does this two lines in here then use new url parser and use unified topology is that it helps us with overriding or not showing any errors about um, deprecation of the mongoose library if there are outdated or no longer um, being used parts of our mongoose um, library it will not show us any warnings at all upon um, the connection of our mongodb to this app.js file so let me proceed in creating our connection is here so after that we don't want any warnings from um, deprecation we're trying to let our program know that we want it to be notified um, through the console log if we're able to successfully connect to the database let's say mongodb connected it's what we wanted to see once we're able to have it successfully connected and then we also want to catch any errors if the successful or if the connection was unsuccessful so we want to say it here console dot error and then we want it to say error connecting to mongodb it this should be here we'll put an error all right so after it's here don't forget to save it and then down on our terminal we're going to type in a node app that's a js and then let's wait for it to be connected there we have it once we're able to see this line that we asked for it to display up here it means that we're able to successfully made the connection between our file and our mongodb server now that we have our mongodb connected to our js project this node project that we're trying to build uh, what we're going to do next is we are going to define our schema just like what we've talked about earlier schema is the type of information that we wanted to include in um, our database so what we're going to do first is let us create another file let's name it book.js we will try to um, create a database of books and let us have information about these books defined inside our schema so on our book.js file we're going to write a variable first we're going to require um, mongoose again Mongoose. all right and then we're gonna say down here that we are creating a new schema by storing it in a variable we're naming book schema and we want that to create a new instance mongoose that schema and then inside this curly br um, brackets is where we're going to define our um, information then the first information about the book would be um, the, a title now inside our schema we can also nest information inside every um, key information now for the title we would like it to include of course um, the type 
and then we are going to say that we would like the type of the title to be um, a string and then aside from the type of this information or of this data we also um, wanted this information to be required on every entry since this is a vital information for our database and then once the title is done we also would like to know who is the author of that book so again after defining the key information we're going to put in the value um, referencing to the type of that information that we're trying to enter so for authors we would like for it to be a type string as well and then we also would want to know the publication year of the book which this time we will be indicating as a number Aside from the publication year, we're also looking for its genre. Now, inside our genre, it might hold um, a book can have like multiple genres for it. So we are going to restore this information inside an array. It can be multiple arrays, but all of them should be um, a string type. And then the last information we wanted to have is... No, let's just remove this information here. And then I think we are good with all these um, information. Now, for this file, for our book, the JS file to be used, um, two other files for, our, our, for us to be able to call it on a different location, we're going to have it exported by writing this line of code, module.exports, and then mongoose.model. Then we're going to define book. Then we're calling in here the book schema variable we created above let's save this and then back to our app.js file we're going to of course um, require the book.js file we just created up here now the mongoose so we're saying we are declaring this variable this file in a variable we call book and then let's have that require look for the file okay Right, so now this is how we define a schema. This is all the information we wanted to have in every instance that we are saving a book information on our database. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we will, of course, try to use all this information to try to um, enter an entry to our database. So the way we do that is we, um, we will be doing it on the same file as the app.js file down here. We are going to create a function. So, it will be an async function. Let me type it up here. Now, inside our function, we are declaring new book as the variable that's going to instantiate the book schema we created on the other file. And then inside it is where we are going to fill out the information that we required to our schema so for the title let's type in here the great gatsby as an example for the title of our book and then next to the title is we said author let's type in here f scott fitzgerald okay and then after the author of course the publication here that's Based on my Google search, it was 1925. Okay, and then lastly, for the genre, we define um, the Great Gatsby as listed in two genres. The first one is fiction, and then it can also be in the classic genre as well. Right now, once we're once we're able to fulfill all the information to our schema going to write our await line in here new book and then we're going to use the keyword that save for this information to be saved and recorded on our database I'm gonna type in here on the console as a confirmation that it has been saved new book recorded and then let's call in the variable we created now let's see if this is going to work. What we would like to happen now is once we run the app.js file again, this time it should be showing us all this information that we just type in here. Let me see. Oh, okay. So let's make that new. 
expected. And see what's causing the error here. All right. Save it again, and then let's try running our up the JS file. Let's press Control C, press to exit out of there, and then run node up that JS file again. Wait for it to load up. All right. Now, once we were able to see all this information that we tried recording on our file, it means that we're able to do it correctly and that we have not run into errors. Now, as you can see, we have two more um, information added to our model. Um, first one is the ID. This ID is automatically generated just like how it works with MongoDB database. And every entry that we will be doing, MongoDB auto-generate an ID for us to um, uniquely identify each of these entries that we will be entering on our database. Now, for this line, last file, the um, D, this is just for uh, an identifier for, Mo for Mongoose, so you can just disregard that. And then, that's it. That This is how we create a new um, model inside our uh, database. Now, we would like to also, of course, know and read all the database or all the information we have on the database so far. So since we're able to perform the create function from our CRUD, let's now try to read all the contents of our database. This is how we're going to do it. So we define another variable. We're naming all the books. And then we would we are calling the function find. We are not putting any parameters in here, which means that we would like to call it everything included on this database we're using. And then we are displaying them on our console. So let's save this. Then once again, control C and then run in our app.js file. Now, so far, uh, we only have um, one entry on our database. So we will uh, only be seeing this um, entry for now. But if that shows up on the terminal, you are good to go. The read function is properly working. Now, of course, we will have instances wherein we would like to have um, updated the information inside our database. So update from our CRUD function should be, this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to declare another variable and let's name it book update. And then this time we use the find um, method. When we are trying to display all of the results, but this time we're going to use the find one method since we would like to um, only update one information or one entry uh, as of this moment. So let's say we wanted to update the title of a certain information or as a certain entry. So since we only have one entry so far, the great Gatsby, we would like to look up that entry. Okay. And then here, we're going to write an if statement. So we're saying that if book to update is book to update that author this is where we're going to put the new value that we wanted to replace for the existing record so let's say let's try to come up with another author i can think of any and maybe we can just put an e and e so i want to be the writer for the great gatsby instead and then we're writing a wait book to update that save saving that changes we're trying to set to the um, request and then we of course wanted to see if we are successful we want our console to say updated book then we just want to see the entire record itself okay we'll see if we did any errors book to update okay we forgot a comma in here and then here we miss an, a letter that should go away let's save it and then let's run it again on our terminal this time we want the author to be changed from Fitzgerald to EMB we have an error let me see what's happening if book to update okay so we miss a letter in here for our variable. So have that corrected. Let's see if it'll work this time. Book to update. Let's make sure everything is correctly typed in now. 
All right. So as you can see, you know, see the author as in the yours truly as the new author of the Great Gatsby. But uh, seriously, this is how you can update the records inside your um, MongoDB database. Now, aside from updating, we um, we will be having scenarios wherein we also would like to delete um, a certain record. So the way we do it is we are going to first create a variable for this function. Let's name it book to delete. And then, of course, we're going to use the find one and delete function. Very straightforward. And then we're again looking for the title as the identifier of that record. So it should be the great. That's B again. This um, identifier in here can be anything that you can remember um, from the records. So we're just putting in your title, but it can also be if you remember the author of, or if that's easier for you to type, you can put in here the author and the name of the author that uh, you can remember. Let me just type it correctly, Gatsby. Okay. And then we're doing other if statement, if book to delete making sure we type in correctly this time and then of course we wanted to see let me just indent this properly now remove this extra one okay so inside of our if um, statement we're saying that if that record has been deleted, we would like for it to be shown on our console. Let's say, let's make it say deleted book. Deleted book. And then call in the variable book to delete. Just to show that exact record, we just remove from our database. Running node app.js again. Let's wait for it to load up. Okay. All right. So now it's showing in here. It's um, showing us that our console or our file just deleted this entire record. Not just any field or not just any line, but the entire record um, of this particular entry we requested here on our app.js file. All right. So now there you have it. So for this video, we're able to understand what um, Mongos is about. I uh, teach you how to have it um, installed and have it integrated into your node project. On the next coming video, we will uh, talk about more in depth on how to use advanced functionality inside our Mongoose. So please tune in and I hope to see you around on the next video. See ya!